Hey, hey girl, hey! Welcome, welcome, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, this is just welcome. Hi baby, I am Fancy. We are so happy to have you. If you are returning, thank you so much for your love and support. Happy Friday. Moving forward, we will be posting every Tuesday and every Friday unless specified otherwise. If anything changes or if I'm missing an upload or whatever the case may be, or maybe an upload is going to be late, you will know if you follow me on Instagram, I'll leave my IG handle here. Today, I am just getting back in. I took my baby to go see the Dallas Cowboy football players practice. It's a new season. I am super, super excited. My little boy is super, super excited. He's doing extremely well. Girls, thank you so much for asking about him. And um, he's a lineman. Like when I sit here and tell you that baby, his feet are my same size. I think they're bigger than mine. But you know, um, he says they're the same size. So we wear the same size shoe at this point. He's in grown men clothes. Like he's almost taller than me. I'm like, Lord, thank you. Like, Lord, I just want to thank you because like I'm over here just proud and I'm smiling and I'm grinning. So I am recording this video a little later than what I wanted to, but it was worth it. We had a great time, you know, over there at the um, Cowboy Stadium. And yes, ladies, Ladies, even without children you know, there was some girls over there freestyling mixing mingling talking to some people so um definitely check out what's going on within your community so you can you know meet people you can meet girlfriends to go out and freestyle with and like-minded women to pursue your goals with and you can also come across investors so i hope you girls enjoyed that story time that i posted on tuesday so many of you ladies was asking me to break down what happened on our los angeles girls trip so if you haven't already go ahead and first like this video second make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and third be sure to check out that story time it is an hour watch and you're not going to even want to miss a minute of it so girls definitely head over there and check out that story time it got crazy los angeles gone wrong so i'm super super excited for this girls chat we are going to be discussing boundaries versus standards and why it's so important to not only know the difference but to have both of them written down also before we get into the video if you are needing assistance when it comes to scripts when it comes to your mouthpiece what you need to say how you need to handle a situation as far as dating or you know even how to get started in dating better quality wealthier men then please do consider joining our patreon or if you are still a bit new and you're not ready yet to join a community of women feel free to book a one-on-one -on -one coaching call i will leave my business email down below and i look forward to hearing from you girls so let's get into this girl chat so i've come across a lot of ladies that have asked me fancy are my standards too high? Did I fumble the bag? Was there something that I said or did that may have um, caused this situation not to pan out in the way that I was hoping for it to? So because I've been having these questions come up as far as fumbling the bag when it comes to, is my standards too high? Is this okay for in a boundary? I figured that this may be an issue that other ladies are experiencing. So I definitely wanted to do a girl chat explaining the differences and give you girls some examples as to what should be on your list when it comes to boundaries and when it comes to standards. So let's get into boundaries versus standards. Boundaries are a safety net. We should have boundaries put into place because we love ourselves and because we know our self-worth. When we do not have boundaries, we are at risk of being manipulated. We are at risk of being used taken advantage of or violated. So next, I wanna provide a few examples of boundaries that you girls can either use or to help you know get your mind going in the right direction as far as 
what your boundaries need to be but i highly recommend and i suggest this to all of my girls that i talk to one-on-one -on -one. you need to have these things written down not only for them to be a guidance kind of a guide of what you're looking for what you're open to but a reminder on what you're not willing to settle on or compromise on so boundary number one that i would recommend no last minute dates okay yes it's an obvious you girls have heard this so many times but i'm still getting ladies hey fancy i have a date this evening i met this guy earlier this morning grocery shopping and i agreed to go out to dinner with him tonight can you please help me because i don't know what to do no ma'am no last minute dates we are not desperate we are not not giving them immediate access to us and we still have to vet them even prior to the date you can agree upon a date absolutely but it does not need to be a date that you're going to see him the day of or the next day. And sometimes not even that weekend, depending on what day within the week that this encounter happened. Make sure that you are presenting yourself as a busy woman, as a woman who is splitting her time amongst the things that are important to her. And that he's going to have to earn his spot to be one of those things that's important to her. So he needs to get to work. So no last minute dates. The next thing I will say is not entertaining anybody who is not emotionally available. Ladies, you girls think that y'all are playing this game and that you're winning. Fancy, don't worry. I know he's not emotionally available. He told me that he doesn't want nothing serious. He, does, he just wants something casual. And yes, I do like him. Yes, we have a lot in common. Yes, we have a lot of fun. But you know, I'm going to play him. He's not going to play me, sis. You're lying to yourself. Boo, you are lying to yourself. If you are genuinely feeling somebody or if you know exactly what you're wanting, you're seeking a marriage, you're seeking a long-term relationship, you're seeking something serious, make sure that you are only entertaining men who are emotionally available or you are going to play yourself every single time. The next boundary should be no sex before marriage. Ladies, we have to become disciplined. We have to have self-control. And any time you girls cross that line of becoming intimate with someone, it turns out bad. It clouds your, your judgment. It exposes you to everything that's out here in these streets. And then you start to fumble on situations because you have now created a soul time. No calls after 11.30 p.m., and no calls before 8 a.m. in the morning. Any time that a guy needs to contact you, text you, email you, call you, any of that, it needs to be preferably during business hours if he has not earned the extended hours. And the extended hours, honestly, there's no need for them to extend past 11, 11, 11, 11 30 at night and 8 o'clock in the morning. Another boundary should be no meeting up at each other's house. You shouldn't be alone with this man at all. You shouldn't be at a hotel. You shouldn't be um, at a boat party, you know, in the back of the boat when everybody's in the front. You shouldn't be separated from others because it's going to lead to him getting comfortable enough to try to make a move on you. And again, ladies, with us reserving our goods it's going to prevent us from being tempted to go there with them especially again i've had so many girls hey fancy i we kind of moved kind of quickly i kind of you know was intimate with him you know on the first date or before the first date and now he disappeared he's ghosted me he's not doing anything for me if you already have a boundary to protect yourself to keep that off the table you know no matter how charming no matter how fine no matter what he's working with no matter what move he tries to pull on you you know it's a boundary and you know when you sense it going that way or a possibility that it might start to go that way you can immediately stop it and you can remove yourself from that situation remove yourself from the hot seat sis remove yourself from the hot seat the next one or consider putting on your list again i'm not trying to tell you what should be on your list or not i want to break down the differences between boundaries and standards and give examples another example of a boundary that you should consider um being on your list is no 
verbal or physical disrespect and that includes inappropriate talk rude remarks disrespectful actions anything that can be considered abusive or hostile or disrespectful in no way is it excusable and it should never happen yes it is okay when it comes to you know the inappropriate talk to give a warning listen i'm not comfortable with you know you speaking to me in that manner i am a lady and i would appreciate it if you conducted yourself like a gentleman at all times when we are together i will always respect you and i really need you to respect me as well and that should be the first and final it should be the first and the final warning after that if it happens again it's it's done it's a boundary we're not going to go there boundaries are here to protect us we know our worth we're not desperate and if you don't do it somebody else is going to do it on to the next the next boundary you should consider having on your list is no dealing with men who are in relationships with other women yes it is a new season we are doing better because we know better we are not one of those girls who has to be a runner-up, second place aside, or putting our lives at risk dealing with, you know, a love triangle, which we know, again, some of us know who watch those, um, you know, I did it for my man and, you know, fatal attraction and all of these different things. Love triangles can bring in unnecessary drama and it can have you know fatal ends so definitely consider it to be added to your a boundary no longer dealing with men who are in relationships our next one should be no entertaining men who need a mother figure we're not here to teach you anything we're not here to help you do anything we're not here to coddle you we're not here to hold your hand. We're not here to babysit you. We're not here to put you on. We're not here to financially support you. We're not here to hold you down and be understanding when you fall short. We're not here to be your mother. So any man that requires you to be their mother, again, they don't qualify. And the final boundary that I want to give you an example um, for is going to be we are not chasing any men, period. And we are not entertaining men for attention, affection, or for love. We love ourselves enough for the both of us. We are busying ourselves with self-work. We're being active. We are creating businesses. We are making more money. We're flipping the money that we have. We're hanging out with like-minded women. We are so busy doing everything else that we are not entertaining these men because we're bored and because we're lonely. If you're bored and you're lonely, that means that you don't have enough to do or enough to work on. Consider joining our Patreon. And also, we are not entertaining these men for love because that means that if we are seeking them for love, that means that we are missing love. When we already love ourselves, we are looking for someone to add on to what we have already versus those who are looking for love because they don't have love. And when that person gives them a type of love, even if it's fake love, and that person removes that love, then you're in a position of trauma, of damage, of brokenness. So those are some examples of some boundaries that you should definitely consider adding onto your list. And I think it's a great starting point for you to continue to expand. Again, having too many boundaries um, I wouldn't say um, is a necessarily a negative thing, but I will say that it's important to be aware of what your boundaries are and what you're not willing to move on. So um, let's get into standards. Now standards are qualities that we are requiring these men to already possess prior to us considering them as a potential. And these are a few examples of some standards that you girls should have for any man that you are entertaining or considering to be a pot. He should have a career or a business. He should have his own car. If you guys live in a city that is not public transportation dependent, we're not looking for a man who is going from temp agency to temp agency to odd job to odd job. He needs to be totally secure when it comes to his employment. 
and security within employment comes from having a career or having a business and I mean not a new business that he's trying to get up and off the ground and he's needing people to pour into and he's really tight on funds but an established business the next standard that you girls should consider putting on your list is you shouldn't do drugs or be an alcoholic anytime there's an addiction in place it could be any type of addiction it could be a corn addiction it could be a um a drug addiction it could be an alcohol addiction any addiction comes with a lot when i tell you a lot of problems a lot of toxicity a lot of drama a lot of unnecessary things that you are adding onto your plate and it's not going to turn out well if he has an addiction and he's battling with something then he needs to be in a rehab he does not need to be focused or distracted in a relationship so that should be on everybody's list if he has an addiction he is not a candidate the next standard he must have healed from the traumas of his past currently be on a healing journey because we all know that healing is a continuous thing and he must have done some self-work becoming the best version of himself he also needs to be aware of his issues and his triggers while being able to properly communicate what he needs from someone who he's dealing with when it comes to things that he may be sensitive about. So yes, we are all human. We have all been through th some things that we have signed up to go through and some things that was totally, you know, outside of our control and that we did not sign up to partake in. And so with that being said, we can understand that people handle situations differently and people carry things with them differently and with them carrying things differently it's okay for somebody to have a trigger but he needs to be aware that he has a trigger hey i'm not comfortable being called out my name or hey i'm not comfortable with this term or you know hey i'm not comfortable with this or hey i'm not comfortable with that he needs to be at a place of healing where he is not only able to acknowledge what he is what his issue is or what a trigger is that he has but he should be able to communicate it to you so you are not causing those triggers to occur he must not offer effortless or cheap dates we are looking for men who move with intention we are looking for men who are genuinely interested to change our lives for the better to invest into us to pour into us to take us to the next level he should have no pending criminal charges ma'am no pending charges we are not waiting to hear what the the jury has come to a conclusion with we are not waiting to hear his sentencing we are not waiting to oh don't worry i'm not i don't have a court date until next year we are not the one so if he has any pending charges, which again, in your vetting process, you should be able to do these background checks. You should be able to do this research on who you're dealing with, knowing his network, knowing the different things, how many times he's been married, how many kids he has, his last place of residency, you know, how long has he lived this lifestyle? You should be able to do all of this during the vetting process. So with that being said, no pending charges and no prior heinous crimes now i do understand things happen and so everybody might not have a crystal clean background but as long as you're comfortable with the past charges that are now dismissed or now not relevant anymore and that's not going to affect him you know moving forward the next thing the next standard is that he must demonstrate integrity maturity discipline selflessness confidence and leadership as a man it's important for him to obtain these qualities so definitely consider having these things on your list when you have your list written out plain as day it helps you to identify exactly what you are looking for and what to look out for 
and what you're not looking for. The last two standards I'm going to add to this startup list is he has to be able to manage conflict. Within any type of situation, there's no perfect relationship. There's no person who never has any kind of issues going on within their life. He has to be a man that can manage stress and he can navigate conflict. If he blows up, everything is over, he wants to try to end it all because, you know, things aren't turning out in the way that, you know, he needs them to, he is not mentally stable or healthy to be in a relationship. And this should be a standard that he already possesses prior to you considering him as a potential. And last but not least, you should consider having as a standard, he should be financially comfortable again you girls need to know how much you are wanting these men to contribute to you at minimum on a monthly basis and then with that it's going to tell you how much he needs to make to be able to sustain his lifestyle his businesses his wants his needs his desires and still have extra money to pour into you still by having savings so um, that's going to help you have a better idea as far as does he qualify or does he not so girls these were the differences between standards and boundaries boundaries are to protect you boundaries are put in place to prevent certain situations standards are things that you require from them to obtain within themselves prior to you considering them as a true candidate for being a potential. Now, everybody's list of standards and boundaries will look different. Some girls don't mind certain things over the other, and so that is totally fine. I just wanted to give you a few examples. I wanted to help you define what a boundary is versus a standard, and I wanted to give you kind of a starting place so you can see or gauge if what you have on your boundaries or your standards is it too extreme or if it's perfect for me standard would be that my guy would have to have a relationship with Christ yours might not um, that might not be a standard for you girls another you know standard might be if he hasn't spent X amount of dollars by date three then no matter what you block him you don't give him a chance to explain himself you don't give him a chance to do anything you don't give him another date to try to show you that it's going to take time with him it's just going to be a little bit longer and you know sooner or later he's going to invest you cut him off that could be a standard and you know um even age can be a standard but girls y'all don't be yeah, the as many 20 year olds y'all be talking about and dealing with you know, that's your business. I'm not here to judge you. I just want you to be realistic. If you're expecting somebody to really step up financially and take care of you in a certain way, and he's still young, just try to gauge, is it realistic? Somebody his age, could he really provide that for you, you know, in the play and all your kids? Or if you don't have kids, provide, you know, your high maintenance lifestyle while he's still you know, paying off college debt and he's still trying to get his feet on the ground and he's still trying to get his business off the ground and he's still trying to do this and that. So definitely make sure that your standards are realistic. So no matter how your list may look, be sure to have it written down. Not only guidance for meeting new people, but a reminder like I said it before a reminder as to what we will not do no matter how fine no matter how good you smell no matter who you know no matter who your daddy is let this be a reminder of what we will do and what we not gonna do We've had multiple conversations within our Patreon about um, making it plain and clear, you know, exactly what we're lo looking for. What exactly do we want a hypergamous relationship, a hypergamous lifestyle look like for us and what we would need to do to attract a type of man that can provide that for us. Like today in our live, one of the girls um, did research and she broke down their X amount of billionaires in the um, city of Houston, X amount of billionaires in Dallas, X amount of billionaires in um, Austin, X amount of billionaires in San Francisco. She did New York City. She did the UK. She did, um, she did a breakdown of every girl who was in the live chat, you know, so they can have an idea. These are the amounts of billionaires within your proximity just to give us kind of an insight some women lifestyle that they want 
it's not going to require that person to be a billionaire. And then some women, the lifestyle that they want, they may require them to have somebody who's actually a billionaire. But then when it comes with billionaires, it comes with a lot of extra stuff that you got to deal with. But again, um, that's for another video another time. But know exactly what you're looking for and what you're not willing to compromise on so it's going to position you to be able to take the steps necessary to attract those types of men so um yeah ladies i hope this list helped you i hope this breakdown of standards versus boundaries you know gave you a different insight for you to create a list that is tailored to fit your needs i love you girls so much and be sure to like this video so we can share this message with other women i love you girls so much and you guys have a great weekend and i will see you in our tuesday upload and if you're in the patreon i'll see you girls on sunday in our live group chat love you ladies so much and y'all have a good one take care